Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing Riemann sums and how they are used to define the definite integral. So we've already seen the definite integral, right? And we've talked about how it represents this signed area. And so you may think, well, that's already a definition, but in general, that doesn't mean it's easy to compute, right? Sometimes we're very fortunate and we have a nice graph that looks like this. And we're just like, oh, boom, area is, you know, width times height and I'm done. Uh, but sometimes we are not so fortunate and maybe we have something that looks like this and maybe I'll even have it come over here so it doesn't look like it cancels out at all. So here we have a curve and you know we don't have a nice like circle or triangles or squares things that we can find the area of easily just using our knowledge of geometry. So the question is how do we compute this? Right this guy is easy this guy's not easy. So I want you to think back to when we defined the derivative, right? It was hard to find the slope of a tangent line because we were used to finding slope with two points and not one, right? So this was hard, but if we had two points, then, well, that slope is easy, right? <clears throat> and so what did we do? Well, we used the easy thing as we got closer and closer to that one point, and then we took the limit and we got the hard thing. Well, we're gonna do the same thing here. So we said on the left that finding the area of a rectangle was easy. So what we're gonna do is we approximate the area of this curve with rectangles. So obviously this is an approximation, right? It's not gonna be equal here. But if our rectangles get thinner and thinner, then we're gonna have a more and more accurate approximation. The idea is again, a limiting process, right? Just like those secant lines got closer and closer to that point, our rectangles are gonna get closer and closer to zero width. And when you take the limit, we're gonna get the exact area. So let's try to investigate this a bit more. So let's look at the integral from zero to one of x squared dx. So just believe me here, uh, we'll figure out how to do this very quickly soon, uh, but this turns out to be one-third, okay? And so I'm just looking at my graph from zero to one here. This is x squared. And so what we're going to do is approximate this area using rectangles and see kind of how close this gets to one-third and just how this process works in general. So we're going to look at two different cases, but in both here, uh, we're going to look at having two rectangles. And the first one, we're going to use right endpoints. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I have two rectangles on an interval of width one, right, I'm going from zero to one, then it turns out you don't have to do this. You can use intervals of any length, but it's often easiest to do it of equal length. And so we would just do width one half, right? And so we're just gonna cut this off at one half here. And if I wanna use the right endpoints, right? I've got two sub intervals here, zero to one half and one half to one. Then my right endpoint says I'm gonna be using one half and one to determine the heights of my rectangles. So I just go to one half, I plug it into my function. So I look at that point on the graph and that's gonna determine the height of my first rectangle, I go to one, I plug it in, I look on the graph, that's gonna be the height of my second rectangle. And so for my right sum here, which I'm gonna call R2, R for right, and two for the number of rectangles, is going to be, well, I've got width one half for my first rectangle, times what's my height? Well, my height is just plug it into the function, so it's gonna be one half squared. That's at one fourth here. And then, plus, again, width one half, and the other one is height one, right? I plug that in to x squared. And so my end answer, this is one eighth plus one half, and so I get five eighths, or about 0.625. I mean, that's not really about, that is exact. Um, so then we can also do this with left endpoints, okay? So for L2, I'm gonna look at left endpoints, and so I'll still do width one half, but here I'm using the left. So I'm using zero and I'm using one half. So the first one has no height, right? At zero, zero squared is zero. Uh, and then the second one here, I am putting in one half. And so this one is just gonna be one half times zero squared plus one half times one half squared. So we get one eighth and that is 0.125. So a couple things to note here. 
uh, one, the first is an overestimate, right? I mean, one, the number is bigger than one third, but also you can see it graphically, right? We're tacking on area above. And then for the left sum, we're looking at rectangles below our graph. And so we're underestimating our area. And of course we end up with something less than one third. So let's see what happens now if we add in a couple more rectangles, right? We should be getting more accurate if that's the case. So with four rectangles, right, the first thing we should do is think about what is our width, right? So our width here is going to be, well, we've got length one for our whole interval and we have four rectangles. So if we make them equal width, they'll be width one fourth. Um, and then we're just gonna go ahead and figure out what this looks like, right? So for the right sum, I plug in one fourth here, I get this height, plug in one half then, gives me my second rectangle. Then I plug in three fourths. And then lastly, I plug in one. And so I have my four rectangles here. And so my right sum, which I'll call R4 here, again, R for right, four for the number of rectangles, is going to be, so I've got my width of the first one times my height, which is, I plug it into X squared, so one fourth squared. Again, width one fourth, now I'm plugging in one half, one fourth, plugging in three fourths and then one fourth plugging in one. And this turns out to be approximately 0.47 if you mess around on a calculator there. Okay, so then what about if we have left endpoints? So this one, again, is gonna be very, very similar, right? These three will actually all be shared. Uh, it's just that what was the last one is gone and then it's replaced by this first one on the left, so that's at height zero. Um, and then, you know, we shift this guy over. So second endpoint, we plug in one fourth, then we plug in one half, and then the last one we plug in three fourths. So basically all we did here, I mean, we can write it out the long way, or we can notice that all we did is basically take off the very last sum and there. So we basically remove a quarter. Um, and so what we end up with is exactly or an approximately 0.22 because we're just subtracting one fourth from 0.47, okay? And so with this case, what did we notice? So we know the end result should be around 0.33, so we're still not there, but it's much closer than the previous one, right? Because 5 eighths is around 0.625, this is around 0.125, and so we definitely got closer by taking more rectangles. If you ended up taking, you know, a billion rectangles, then you're gonna be very, very, very close to one third. So now let's develop a general strategy for any definite integral here. So uh, those examples we just did should be illuminating. So the first thing that we want to do, right, we wanted to figure out how many rectangles we needed, how wide they should be. So here we're not from zero to one, we're from A to B. And we don't know how many rectangles, so let's just say there's in rectangles that we want, then we can subdivide our interval. So I'm gonna go ahead and name these x0 and xn. And so like the next points would be x1, x2, you keep going. And then eventually you hit xn minus one and you hit your last point at b. So then our ith subinterval is from xi minus one to xi and its width is delta xi. That's just a name we give just to not have to write this every time, but I mean, it's just, your far endpoint minus your closer endpoint. And so we have xi minus x sub, sub i minus one. Okay, so that's our width. How do we get our height? So if you remember back to our example, right, we plug things into the function. So what do we wanna plug in? Uh, so you can use left endpoints, you can use right endpoints, you could use midpoints, you could do in fact anything. So um, you don't have to be consistent, I'm just gonna put some stuff here, so just call this like C1, C2, down to Cn. And so Ci is in the subinterval from Xi minus one to Xi, is called a sample point, okay? And so this will give us our height by plugging into our function. So F of Ci is the height of the rectangle on that subinterval. Okay, and so this actually tells us how to get everything, right? So what is our area gonna be? Well, we can approximate by 
adding up all these rectangles, right? So my very first one is going to have height f of c1 and width delta x1, okay? Then my next one has height f of c2 times width delta x2, and you keep going. And then the very last one, you plug in cn and you do delta xn, okay? And so this is an approximation. And of course, it's going to depend on the number of rectangles, how accurate this is. So this sum of areas of rectangles, this f of c1 delta x1 on down to f of cn delta xn, has a name, and it's called a Riemann sum. So it's named after a famous German mathematician named Bernhard Riemann. Um, and you may see it in another guise. So this is called summation notation. So you may see i equals 1 to n of f of ci delta xi. These are the same. Okay, so this sigma notation here, right, this is a sigma. And uh, the bottom thing is your, your step counter, right? So i equals 1, you plug in c1 and x1, i equals 2, you plug in c2 and x2, and this says you end at n, right? So that's exactly what we're doing up above. We do f of c1 delta x1, and then plus f of c2 delta x2, and the sigma means that we want to be adding all the things uh, that we list out here. So just so this notation isn't completely new when we see it in class, this is what this will mean. Okay, so this gave us an approximation, right? But we want the exact area. So if I want to compute my definite integral, how do I get it? Well, I, like I was saying earlier, right? We want to take these rectangles to be thinner and thinner. How do we do that? Well, we take as many of them as we possibly can. So it's actually the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity of the Riemann sum. And it turns out you can use any and all Riemann sums here, right? So if you, you do left endpoints, you do right endpoints, like all of these, as you take them thinner and thinner, are gonna go to the same thing if this limit exists, okay? So this process should feel somewhat similar to what we did with derivatives, right? We're basically taking something hard and we're approximating it by taking a limit of easy things. And so it's, it's the same basic idea, it's just that calculating area is obviously a little bit different than calculating slope in terms of how you put it in practice. And so for your exercise, I want you to approximate the integral from zero to two of x dx by using four rectangles, uh, first using right endpoints and then next using left endpoints. All right, thank you for watching.